Bray Wyatt's story took several new twists and turns this week. So let's go over the latest new fan theories and go over the actual events themselves. SmackDown kicks off with Bray Wyatt and tells us some similar words that we've been used to hearing over the last few months. Bray is having this back and forth conflict between choosing good and evil. He recently attacked an innocent cameraman on SmackDown, and that was the most violent version of Bray Wyatt that we've seen since his return. Bray has been taking a few moments to sit back and think through his decisions in recent weeks, but he didn't do that in the case of the cameraman. It was this instant attack that gave off similar vibes to some of the Fiend's attacks on his victims. After the cameraman was dragged out of the ring, Bray just stood there staring into the distance like he was in a trance. So we follow that moment up with this promo from Bray Wyatt, and he's extremely regretful what he did, and he's asking for the cameraman's forgiveness. But Bray gets cut off by LA Knight. LA Knight says that he still doesn't believe that Howdy and Bray are two different people. His theory is that Bray paid someone backstage just to put on a costume, just to mess with his head. LA Knight also addressed one of the little things about Bray's new character that was gone unnoticed by some fans. And that's the fact that Bray Wyatt is stuttering more often. He always seems nervous. He always seems unsure about everything he's saying. And like LA Knight mentioned, it's hard for Bray Wyatt to even complete a single sentence. Now, obviously, the stuttering and nervousness is just a part of Bray Wyatt's new character. If you've ever seen Bray's old work, you know that he's never made one single mistake while he's talking. Truly one of the best on the mics. So, this regression in his speech is not the talent's regression. It's strictly a new character trait for this new story. Bray Wyatt, the character, is also disturbed and in such a rough space right now, that he just can't function. And that's what LA Knight points out. He mentioned how Bray Wyatt used to be this massive force, and now he's one of the biggest shells of himself. LA Knight mentions how it'll be his first Royal Rumble, and how he wants it to be special. So he challenges Bray Wyatt to a match at the event. Bray Wyatt says that he's got something to prove, and how he has to show everyone how he's still capable of being cruel when he absolutely needs to be. So Bray accepts the match for the Royal Rumble. Uncle Howdy jumps on the big screen and drops a little line where he says, Embrace the dark. Uncle Howdy's music plays and out comes Howdy himself down the ramp into the ring. Uncle Howdy stands side by side with Bray Wyatt for a quick moment before taking Bray Wyatt out with his own sister Abigail move. LA Knight rolls out of the ring and seems more confused than ever while Howdy makes his way up the ramp again. So there was a lot to fully digest here in this moment. Obviously, Howdy's message before he came out of Embrace the Dark could have several different meanings. Maybe Howdy's referring to how Bray Wyatt needs to embrace his dark side again. Or Howdy could have literally been referring to the idea behind the Pitch Black match. The rumored Pitch Black match was made officially short after this segment was completed. It will be, in fact, Bray Wyatt versus LA Knight in the first ever pitch black match at the Royal Rumble. Now, even though the match has been confirmed, we still don't have much info on how this match will actually work. But this segment here from the December 30th edition of SmackDown might have given us a few teasers and hints about the new stipulation. While the arena lighting for the pitch black match may be similar to the lighting we saw during Uncle Howdy's entire recent appearance, the second Howdy came out, the lighting in the arena was at a very bare minimal. You were still able to see Howdy, Bray, and LA Knight in the ring, and see what was still happening. But the lighting was so minimal that it was impossible to actually see their faces. So it's quite possible that the pitch black match will have the same sort of lighting that we saw during Howdy's attack on Bray Wyatt. And like we mentioned before when the stipulation was first rumored, it sounds like we're able to get a lot of surprises and reveals in this match. Since the lighting will be limited, maybe we find out that Bray and Howdy aren't alone, and how maybe there's a third family member that appears during this match and attacks LA Knight. It definitely seems like the sort of stipulation that will really push Bray's story forward. So there's a lot to look forward to there. 
And there's also a lot of questions and theories surrounding the overall story that Bray Wyatt is currently going through. This individual that showed up and attacked Bray Wyatt on SmackDown was officially labeled as Uncle Howdy by WWE. So everyone naturally went with it. But when you compare the December 30th Uncle Howdy to the December 16th Uncle Howdy, it's night and day. It's two obvious different individuals. The first Uncle Howdy appeared to be a bit more heavy set, shorter hair, and wore the Uncle Howdy face mask. The second Uncle Howdy was way more slim, had a different walk, longer hair, and he wore Bray Wyatt's mask from Extreme Rules with the bottom half cut off. So the differences between the two Uncle Howdies was a popular topic of discussion. Now, there's a good shot that the December 16th edition of Uncle Howdy was simply just a placeholder, so that's why they didn't do too much and get physical. But considering the December 30th edition of Uncle Howdy got in the ring and performed the sister Abigail, chances are that whoever is under that mask is going to be the permanent Uncle Howdy. The fans are also discussing if it could be two separate individuals even within the storyline. What if the first Uncle Howdy was the real Uncle Howdy? The one that attacked Bray Wyatt is actually the long-awaited Uncle Harper character. That's a theory that's also going around. Everyone is calling him Howdy. But what if it was Uncle Harper after all? As far as the reasoning behind why Howdy attacked Bray Wyatt, that's something that the fans are also trying to figure out. It was clear straight from Howdy's first appearance that he wasn't exactly on Bray Wyatt's side. That's why we talked about how LA Knight is Bray's current opponent. But the much larger overarching villain in his story is clearly Uncle Howdy. Uncle Howdy has lost his patience, and understandably so. Howdy's been begging Bray Wyatt to embrace his old ways since back in October, and Bray still hasn't listened to him. Howdy gave Bray numerous amounts of chances and ways for them to fix their relationship with each other time and time again. He told Bray to just put the mask back on and forget what everyone thinks, and to just be himself again. But Bray didn't listen. Then when everything started going down with LA Knight, Bray was getting embarrassed by LA Knight and refused to do anything to LA Knight. That's when Howdy took matters into his own hands and laid down several backstage attacks on LA Knight. Those attacks on LA Knight from Howdy was basically a direct message from Howdy to Bray. Basically saying, if you're not going to hurt him, I'm going to do it. This is how things should be done. But Bray still didn't budge and give in to Uncle Howdy's request. So when Howdy sees Bray once again apologizing and asking for forgiveness from the cameraman, that was basically the last straw and last shot that he was going to give Bray Wyatt. Almost three months of Bray not listening to him. So Bray left Howdy with no other choice but to attack Bray himself. So that could be what's going on here, but we don't know the full intentions behind the attack. Is Howdy just trying to awaken that darkness in Bray Wyatt? Will he be friendly again with Bray Wyatt if Bray goes back to his old ways? Or is Howdy completely done with Bray Wyatt? Well, considering the fact that Uncle Howdy basically has no other choice but to stay involved in Bray's story, there's a strong possibility that things could get resolved between him and Bray as long as Bray gives him what he wants. So Bray Wyatt's story continues to be one of the most intriguing stories in WWE, and we'll have to see where it all goes after the Pitch Black match. But what are your thoughts on today's stories? Leave your comments below, don't forget to subscribe with all notifications on, and leave a like if you enjoyed. Thanks for watching, guys.